In this video, we're going to look at another application of optimization. The scenario is that a company operates two plants and the cost of each plant is given here. The cost has a fixed cost and also an element that depends on how much is produced at that plant. There is a total demand which is related to the price. As we know, if you increase the supply for something, the price is going to drop. And so what we see here is we have a fixed price, and then the more that is produced, the lower the price is going to be. What we're going to be looking at is optimizing the net profit for this company by balancing off the costs, production, and price. Let's start with the total cost. The total cost is going to be the cost of running plant one, simply added to the cost of running plant two. And that will be 8.5 plus our 0 0.5. 0.03 Q1 squared from here plus the 5.2 0 0.04 Q2 squared. And at this point, it makes sense to merge those together. We'll end up with 13.7 plus an element that depends on Q1 and the second element that depends on Q2. And that'll be the total cost. If we move to the next slide, we want to compute the gross revenue, and the revenue is going to equal the number of units sold, and we take that and we multiply it by the price. Now we saw earlier that this price depends on Q1 plus Q2, so we're going to have an interesting combination there. We are going to produce Q1 plus Q2 of them, and we're assuming that every unit built is sold. However, the price of each of those units is going to go down if we produce more. So we'll have 60 minus 0 0.04. And here we have Q1 plus Q2, that being our total production. As we're going to be optimizing this later, it makes sense to expand this out into terms that will be easier to differentiate. So we can expand this out and get 60 Q1s plus 60 Q2s, minus 0 0.04. Let's multiply this out in stages. We'll have Q1 times Q1 plus Q2, and we'll have another negative 0 0.04 Q2 multiplied in there, Q1 plus Q2. These kinds of problems do have some challenges. It's easier to work with X's and Y's, usually than these subscripts, precisely because it's easy to mislay one of these numbers. You just have to be a little bit careful as you go through it, though, and you'll get to the same place. We're going to do one last expansion because we'll be able to merge some terms here. We have negative 0.04 Q1 Q2, and we have another negative 0.04 Q2 Q1. Well, those are the same. So we'll have 0.08 Q1 Q2s. And then we'll have Q1 squared with a 0.04 and a 0.04 Q2 squared. And that describes the full revenue for this company. We then want to combine that revenue and cost to get the profit. So our total profit is revenue minus costs. And the revenue expression we found earlier was this final statement here, 60Q1, 60Q2, minus the 0.08, Q1, Q2, minus the 0.04, Q1 squared, and another 0.04, Q2 squared. All of that minus the costs, which were on the first calculation, 13.7, plus 0.03 and 0.04 for Q1 squared and Q2 squared, respectively. There we go. It's crucial at this point to include the parentheses here to get the signs right. We can then merge some of the terms. The Q1 and Q2s we can't do anything with. There's only one of each of those. The mixed term will also stay the same. There's only one mixed term, but we do have negative 0.04 Q1 squared minus another 0.03 of those, which will give us negative 0.07 
q1 squared. And in a similar calculation, we'll have negative 0.08 q2 squared and 13.7 at the very end. So we've calculated an expression where if we are told how much we're going to produce out of each plant, we will get the net profit as a result. Our goal, of course, is going to be to find the optimal values for the production that maximize the profit. Here we've restated our expression for the profit function. And we then look for critical points. And if we look for critical points, we're looking for multi-subscripts here. Profit, taking the derivative with respect to Q1, will give us a 60. And then being careful with our expressions here, Q1 is a variable, Q2 is a constant, it stays around. The derivative of Q1 squared is going to be 2Q1s times negative 0.07. If we multiply this by 2, we get 0.14. That derivative is 0, and that derivative is 0. We do the same thing for Q2. We get 0, 60Q2s, derivative is just 60. Similar logic for this expression. Q2 is the variable that goes away, leaving 0.08 Q1s. And Q2 is our variable. We will have 0.16 Q2. And those are our first derivatives. We're going to set those equal to 0 for our critical points. And solve for Q1 or Q2. In this particular case, we can actually look at ways to cancel these whole equations. Let's take equation one, label that one, label that two. If we take equation one minus equation two, we'll get the 60s minus the 60s. You can think of this as a whole calculation, adding this whole left-hand side and the whole right-hand side. So the right-hand side adds, adds up to zero. Then we have minus 0.8 Q2 minus minus 0.16 Q2, and that'll end up canceling, and we'll have 0.08 Q2s left over, and we'll have negative 0.14 Q1s, double negative plus 0.08, that'll give us 0.06 Q1s, but negative as the other term. Just double checking, 0.08 plus 0.16 would be 0.08. The Q1 terms, 14, plus, negative 14 plus 8 is negative 6. And what that gives us is a nice ratio between the two quantities we want to produce. We can solve for, say, Q2 here. We'll have 0.08 Q2s is the same as 0.06 Q1. And so Q2 is going to be 0 0.06 over 0 0.08 Q1. And that is much better known as 3 quarters. So we get a nice simple relationship between Q1 and Q2 at the critical point. We can then use that with one of the initial equations and actually solve for a value for, say, Q1. We'll call that equation 3, and we'll take 3 and insert it into 1. That'll give us 60 minus 0 0.08 times Q2, but Q2 is 3 quarters of Q1, minus 0.14 Q1s equals 0. All of these terms are negative. We bring them to the far side. And this turns into 0.06 anyway. So we'll have 0.06 Q1s plus 0.14 Q1s. And then we can solve for Q1. 60 over 0 0.2 if we add those up. That turns into a nice round number of 300. And last but not least, we can then use that to find Q2, which is 3 quarters of Q1. And so 3 quarters of 300 will be 225. So our only critical point in this problem has factory 1 producing 300 units and factory 2 producing 225 units. Now our next step is to identify or confirm that this is actually a local maximum. And of course, that requires the second derivative test. We will do that on the next page, though we'll copy over the first derivatives here so we can get to the second derivatives on the next page. With our first derivatives here, we can then find the second derivatives. And again, it's a bit of subscript extravaganza here. 
but we take the q1 derivative of this. There's actually only one term with q1 in it, and this derivative would just be the coefficient. We repeat that for q2, and we end up with negative 0 0.16. And then we do the mixed partial derivative, pick either one of these. We'll start with the q1 derivative and then take the derivative with respect to q2. We get a constant negative 0.08. We then look at our point, which was q1 is 300, q2 is 225. That doesn't really matter because all of the partial derivatives are constants anyway. 0 0.14, q2, q2 is negative 0 0.16, q1, q2 is 0 0.08. Then the determinant or the discriminant for the second derivative test, we multiply these two expressions and we subtract this value squared and we get a discriminant of 0 0.016. The value isn't so critical. The key thing is that it's positive, which means we have matched concavities. Again, the expression we're looking at here, this d is the easiest to think of as a product of the two second derivatives, two concavities. And we also have, taking either one of the partials here, the partial derivatives are negative, which is concave down. And so if we were to draw this, we have a critical point, tangent plane is flat, Everywhere around there, it's concave down. And so what we found is the point 300, 225 is a local, looking at the shape here, it's a local peak or a local max for the profit function, which is exactly what we would be looking for as a manager.